Hello! Today I will show you how I did my first digital journal using Canva, Keynote, Adobe Acrobat, and GoodNotes. This is my first time and I have no experience whatsoever. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's learn and do it together. I don't know how familiar people are with Canva, but it's a website where you can do graphic design, social media content, etc. for free and make it look aesthetically pleasing. So there is Canva Pro and Canva Free. I took the Canva Pro one month trial and accessed some Canva Pro elements for free. And Canva is what I used for my digital journal. You can click on journal, but if it doesn't display, you can go to the search bar and search for journal. And then you'll see a lot of different journal templates. It's important to remember the sizing of the document. I used 768 times 1024 pixels and it worked fine for me. Generally, it's good to have a year plan, a month plan, a weekly plan, and a daily plan, and also some additional pages like water intake, expense budget, habit tracker, mood tracker, etc. So it's up to you what you want to add based on your lifestyle. If you search for journal, you see a lot of different journal templates, and if you pick one, you automatically get suggested a lot of similar ones. This is a good way to find templates that match your aesthetic. This is the yearly template that I used for my original planner, but for the sake of the tutorial, I wanted to pick a different one. I don't like the colored stripes, so I'm removing them. This is the monthly template that I used for my original calendar, and I decided to go with the same one for this tutorial. I just switched the position of the text a little bit and added a miniature calendar in the right corner and also some stickers. So now I'm just adding all of the months. I am also deleting the lines underneath. I don't really think I'm gonna need them. I decided to remove the 2023 because we already know it's 2023 from the yearly plan. If you click here, you get an overview of all of the pages. So I'm just going to organize the months so they come in order. So now we have the yearly plan and the monthly plan. If you make a mistake, you can just click here at the arrow that points backwards and it will reverse your mistake. If you click shift while moving the text, you can get better precision as you move the text without changing the height. I feel like the yearly plan I chose didn't match the monthly plan, so I'm just going to go with the original template I used for the yearly plan. I'm just changing the size of the months so the frames become a bit smaller and less overwhelming and deleting the colorful yearly plan that didn't fit the style. And above the pages, you're gonna see some icons. The icon with the paper and a plus sign means add a new page. The icon with two pages and one plus means duplicate the page. The arrow up and arrow down means moving the order of the page. You can also lock the page if you don't want to do any more changes. Here is the overview of all the pages we have so far and I think it looks pretty good. Now let's do the daily plan. I am searching daily plan and then picking a template that I felt was suitable. Remember to change the font so it matches the font of the other pages and also the size. I don't feel like I'm gonna need a shopping list so I'm removing this. I also don't think I'm gonna need meals in my daily plan so I'm also removing that. Notice that if you copy a line one time and specify the distance, Every time you click the plus sign, it's going to copy the element in the same distance as the first one. This is a great feature if you work with repetitive elements. The weekly plan, I am just changing font and the size of the text. And for the journal pages, I'm just removing this little green leaf. I don't really like it. Let's add the habit tracker and change the font. And also, let's add an expense tracker. I don't really use expense trackers, but for those of you out there who do, I thought I might as well include it in this tutorial. The current template looks a bit lifeless, so let's add some color to it. In the start, you can search for elements that you want to add, and it will automatically recommend you more ones in that style. This also helped me find pretty stickers and similar aesthetic. In my original planner, I had this gemstone aura radiant vibe 
where each month had its own color and its own energy. I wanted to do something similar for this tutorial planner. So I gave each month its own colorful marker element to distinguish each month from each other to make the whole planner more aesthetically pleasing. A bunch of trial and error after, here is the composition that I came up with with the stickers. I also added the same marker elements for each month in the yearly plan as well so that when you click on it, you're gonna go straight to the month. And visually, it's gonna connect you to the months. I added three small stickers that look a bit like gradient or moon transition. These three stickers are going to be buttons that lead you to the additional pages like the habit tracker, the mood tracker, and the expense tracker. I feel like it's a bit strange to have a photo of a person I don't know as a front page, so I decided to go with something more abstract using the same theme of gradient, moon transition, marker, vibe. In the current calendar, there's no problems, but in my previous calendar, I had this issue that the file was too big. So I had to make half of the pages in one Canva file, the other half of the pages in another Canva file, and then I would assemble them in Adobe Acrobat. If you have this issue, you can download Adobe Acrobat and do this. You open one of the PDF files and then you click on pages and you get an overview of all of the pages. After that, you can click on import to import the second PDF file to merge those two PDFs together. If you click and drag, you can move the order of the pages. If you copy a page and then paste it, you can duplicate the page. And if you click on the trash can icon, you delete a page. After you've done this, you can save the file as a PDF and then transfer it to your iPad. I'm using Google Drive, but you could also use WeTransfer or Dropbox, if you AirDrop if you have a MacBook, I guess. Anyway, it works. I'm now on my iPad opening Google Drive and downloading the document by clicking on export and then save to files. And then I open Keynote and create a new document. I'm sorry mine is in Swedish, but I hope you can figure out anyway where to click if you can't read Swedish. Sorry. <laughs> then you change the size of the document and make sure it's the same size as the one you had in Canva. And then I'm just removing some text. Next up is a trick that I figured out myself because the problem is that in Keynote, I can't figure out how to add a PDF. It seems to only be able to import images like PNG, JPEG, etc. If I reduce my file to a PNG or JPEG file instead, I don't get as good quality as a PDF. The way I figured out to solve this is that I open the PDF in the Files app and then I copy a page and then I paste the page in Keynotes. So I'm just copying the page and then going back to Keynotes and pasting. And then I'm just adjusting the size of the page so it matches the size of the Keynote page. And this is a lot of work, especially if you have like over 300 pages like I do, but I just sucked it up and did it. If you have any better solution, please tell me. In Keynote, you can also categorize the pages. By dragging it under another page, it becomes the under category of that page. So I did the month pages as an under category of the year pages and then the week pages under month pages, daily pages under the weekly pages. This is a good way to organize so you know what is happening because there's too many pages at this point. Next up, I am adding the hyperlinks. Just click on add text and then click spacebar several times and then you can change the size of the text to adjust the square. Um, I'm just creating a transparent square that I put on top of the element that I want to be clickable. And then I link it to the page I wanted to link to. If I copy all of the hyperlinks in one page and paste it in another, the positions of the elements are remembered, so I don't need to adjust them manually. This is very nice because you only need to do the hyperlinks of one month and then you copy it to all the other months 
and then change the pages they link to, of course. You only need to link the transparent square to a page once. Even if the page order changes later when you add a page or remove a page, it will still link to the same page that you chose in the beginning. This is very nice because then you don't need to relink as you change the page order. Once you are done, just click on export and I didn't click any of these, don't know what they do. I just export as PDF. And then you save it in your files. Next up, we open GoodNotes and import the file. And here we have the PDF. Let's test the hyperlinks. It works. Very nice. This is just the planner that I did, for example. For the tutorial planner, I'm only adding a few hyperlinks. But in my original one, you can see I had a lot of hyperlinks. After you've imported the file to GoodNotes, you're pretty much done. Lastly, I'll just show you guys what my original planner looks like. I didn't think my planner would turn out this good and I honestly surprised myself. The planner includes a mood tracker, a habit tracker, journaling pages, and a series and movies tracker because I watch a lot of anime. You just have to open the link and write in the secret message to access the document. Remember though that I only did hyperlinks from June to the end of the year. I hope this video taught you something and see you next time. Bye bye! Thank you.